to the right. And those are the, some of the, the terms that we use to describe the distribution of the data. So intervals between cars at a toll booth or, um, or atom decay. So these are gonna be some examples of different types of distributions we haven't spent as much time on in prior presentations. We'll spend more time on in current presentations when we look at these line waiting situations like waiting in line at a, at a uh, toll booth, for example, then oftentimes there's a pattern that we can see with those types of representations, which is like a Poisson distribution, which we'll talk about shortly. And it has characteristics, shapes that we can describe in terms of the, the characteristics we talked about in the past, in this case, skewed to the right. And then we could have uh, exponential distributions we will also talk about as well. So types of data shapes. So the types of data shapes, we could describe our data shapes. Remember, if we have our data in the histogram, we could, for example, have a single peaked histogram, which uh, most common values in the center and fewer values as we move away. That's what you might envision more like a bell-shaped curve. So we would describe that as having more of the data in the middle with a single peak to it. Symmetric. The data looks the same on both sides of the center. So if it's a symmetric, again, you're probably envisioning like a bell-shaped curve with the middle point, and then you have the data somewhat symmetrically uh, on either side of that middle point. But when it is skewed, that's the term we used, right skewed, uh, tail on the right of the center, meaning you've got that, that more data that's going to the right side, uh, and you have that tail that's going out towards the right and then left skewed tail on the left of the center, the opposite. And you could have a binobial, uh, which has two peaks of the data. So instead of having just the data in the middle and then spreading to the side, you could have those two peaks of the data. These are just some terms that we can, we can use to represent the data. And remember, when you're looking at different data sets, you could have these, we're trying to, like if you're looking at the landscape here, and that was representing a particular data set, we could try to look at any particular data set and use those general terms to get an idea of what the data set uh, is doing. So uh, now we wanna, once we get an idea of being able to kind of describe the histogram with those general terms, we wanna be able to see, is there a mathematical description of the data? If we can describe it mathematically with some type of curve or line, that's what's gonna give us more predictive power. That's gonna be what our our focus is more here. So we're gonna take a look at some families of distributions now. These are some common families of distributions. One's gonna be the uniform distribution. We'll talk a little bit more about each of them in future and a little bit here. You got the Poisson distributions, you've got the exponential distributions and the binomial distributions. So let's take a look at each of those in a little bit more detail and we will do example problems in this section related to some of these families of distributions. So we've got the uniform distribution and this is the easiest one to start thinking about. So in other words, we're, if you're thinking about a set of data, we're trying to say, is, is this set of data, the histogram that's coming from it, something that I can represent with one of these mathematical formulas? And the first one is a straight line. So that would be a flat line distribution. An example would be rolling a fair die. So in other words, if you roll a dice, you only have one through six that the dice could roll. And you would expect then the distribution uh, to be an even distribution between all the numbers if it was a fair die, which would be an easy function, f of x equals c. And if I was to make a histogram of it, it would look like this, right? If I rolled the dice, I think this is representing rolling the dice like I don't know, a thousand times or something like that, pulling out the trusty calculator. So if I, rolled, if I rolled one die, you would expect it to be one over six. That's the likelihood, 16.66%, that it's gonna be either a one, two, three, four, five, or six. If I rolled the die a thousand times, then what would you expect to happen that times a thousand? You would expect to have about 167 of each number rolled. That would be, that would be the, the, what you would expect. Now notice that this is just an approximation, a model of what might happen in the actual world. And you can clearly see that because 
it's impossible for me to roll 166.62s because I can't roll 0.6 of a two, right? That's impossible. So the model is not an exact representation of what could actually happen in the world, but you can see how it gives predictive power of what we would basically kind of expect to happen. And you can use that same kind of concept we've thought about in the past, which was we're using kind of like a sample. So I, again, the idea would be, you know, if you have the entire population, if you were looking at everything, we weren't in the cave, but we were looking at everything and we could see the actual vision of everything, then you would have that even distribution in this kind of representation. But because we're taking uh, just a snippet, a sample, then it's not, then we're taking an, an unperfect representation of the world, right? But in any case, we would have just this line. It would just be a line. And so then, so, so, so when we actually roll the dice, it's not going to come out to exactly this line if I roll the die like a thousand times, but this will approximate what, what we think should happen. And therefore, I can use just the graph of a line to predict uh, what's going to happen. And if I rolled it less than a thousand times, the, it would have a family of uniform distribution curves or lines, which would be one over six. And if I